Hi, Steve Hoopman here at the Rhododendron Species Botanical Garden, and welcome to part two of the Rhododendron glanduliferum complex. Uh, in our last episode, we looked at glanduliferum and a new species called Ligong shinensi. We looked at the Yunnan and the Guizhou forms of glanduliferum and discussed the differences. And uh, this time we're going to look at three or four other species that I now consider to be in that same complex, including this one, which is an introduction from Jens Nielsen called Rhododendron magniflorum, which means uh, giant flower, basically. We have not flowered this yet. These plants are probably about 10 years old, uh, but it basically is just, I think, going to be a giant version of glanduliferum itself. It's very similar in appearance, as you can see here. Uh, it's a good breaker. You see we're not pinching these, but it's really bushing out. And it is just now, in mid-August, coming into growth, much like auriculatum, uh, which we will also discuss in this segment. But this is Magniflorum, and the flowers should be a third or a half again as big as glanduliferum. It's only seen as one plant in the wild, quite rare. Uh, to me, it looks like just glanduliferum again, but if the flowers are quite a bit larger, probably deserves specific rank. But that's Magniflorum. I'm assuming that's going to bloom in late summer, uh, or even early fall, like auriculatum, uh, but to have flowers white, maybe pink, very similar to glanduliferum, but quite a bit larger. And actually the leaves have been quite a bit larger than most glanduliferum as well. So uh, that's magniflorum, which is very close to glanduliferum. Now we're going to look at a handful of other species, which I think are also part of that complex, including this one, which is very well known. This is auriculatum. Many people grow this or at least know what it is. It's, it's a late summer, early fall blooming species. Um, it's auriculate at the base and sticky glandular. Um, but I, I think it probably deserves to be in the complex with uh, glanduliferum and faith E and serotinum and species like that. Uh, this is actually the pink version which is a deep pink, which we've just missed in bloom. Most people have the white version. Uh, if you do have a pink one and you didn't get it from us, it's probably Grissonianum crossed auriculatum, which is a very commonly seen pink auriculatum, uh, but it is a hybrid. This is the true thing. Wilson reported it as being white and pink in the wild, and all of the other species in the complex are white or pink, so it makes total sense. But that's auriculatum and we have some of our ancient massive plants from the late 70s, which are some of the largest and oldest plants in the garden. That's the classic standard white auriculatum. Again, those are probably 50, 60 years old and a good 25 feet high. That's auriculatum. Another one in the complex is over in another section of the garden, and so we'll walk over and check that out. Here's another relatively recent introduction, which is in the same glanduliferum auriculatum complex, I think. I'm, I'm, that's my opinion. But this is a new species called Rhododendron faithii, with these big chordate leaves, huge foliage. It's a uh, Fortunia, and it also, you would think, would have big white fragrant flowers in late summer, early fall. Uh, in addition to this fantastic foliage, these plants are 10 years old and they're now going on eight feet. Um, this one though actually bloomed last year for the first time, here anyway, and it bloomed in late September into early October. So much later than even the other species in the rest of the glanduliferum complex. This is Rhododendron faith eat, which I really love for the foliage. Look at the growth we're getting each year, and just fantastic growth. And again, big, really beautiful big white fragrant flowers in late September. Here's a bud right here actually. This is the second time we've seen it in flower. Not even swelling yet. We're in mid-August. But uh, that's Faith E, another species in that complex. One that's very similar um, but found a bit further west and into northern Vietnam is a species called Rhododendron serratum which has similar leaves, but different. And here you see that many of you are probably growing that. That's been in cultivation for 25, 30 years now. Uh, but another really vigorous grower, 
This tends to bloom for us in June, so still quite late, but not as late as the others, and probably the most vigorous rhododendron species around. You'll get sometimes a foot and a half a year, maybe even two feet. Look at the growth on these, but beautiful foliage, strong constitution, big white fragrant flowers in June. That's serotonum, which is also in that glandulifrum complex, I think. Thank you. To further discuss the auriculatum glandulifrum complex, we're looking at a collection made by Peter Wharton at UBC in Guizhou, China, of auriculatum, and it is known from there. This is a very late blooming form of auriculatum, which doesn't really have the same size flowers or leaves as you get in the hobe form, but uh, still it qualifies as auriculatum. Here you can see the new growth is just coming out uh, following blooming. It's just in bloom now, quite fragrant. And uh, again, the leaves are a little fuzzier and less glandular and smaller in this form, but it still does key out to auriculatum. But again, it's just that variation within the glanduliferum auriculatum complex. You're going to get a lot of variation, a lot of overlap. Uh, an interesting thing about auriculatum is, uh, at least in the old cultivated forms that we looked at earlier, uh, something that I tell all the tour groups when we go past is, auriculatum doesn't come into growth until after it blooms in late July or August. So all that year-old foliage just sits there all the way through spring and summer until the end of summer. And then once it blooms, new growth comes out and all the old leaves drop off. And what a strange, very strange adaptation. And what is the benefit of that? I've often wondered because none of the other rhododendrons with which it occurs in the wild do that but that's what auriculatum does. And here you can see on this Guizhou form, uh, the new growth just coming out as the flowers are sort of wrapping up. None of the other species in the complex do that either. So I'm not sure why auriculatum does that. But again, it's just variation and there is a lot of variation. Interesting uh, fact relating to auriculatum, which brought this whole complex together in a sense for me, but also made it more confusing is that uh, Classic auriculatum is known from Hubei, which is up in central northern China. So that's one of the reasons it's hardy. People back east often can grow it if they're in a good spot. Um, pretty hardy species grows with Suchu and Ensi. Uh, it's also known from Fengjingshan in Guizhou, which is not where this was collected. And that's the typical looking form, which we have in the garden here. And then two years ago, I was in Wangxi, which is the province just north of Vietnam, so you're almost in the tropics, went to a new mountain for us and got to the top, and lo and behold, the whole top of the mountain was covered with rhododendron auriculatum, and it looked just like the Hubei form, which was quite striking. Uh, not sure what's going on there. That's not known from Wangxi at all. That's a northern plant. We were down in the subtropics but there was auriculatum. So we'll see how that turns out in cultivation. To further complicate things are two other species, uh, which I think we would now consider to be in the same complex. One we've sold, it's a Jens Nielsen introduction, polytrichum, uh, which we'll look at the foliage in a minute. And the other species came in, we thought as Chisinianum. And I just have photos of that in the wild which we'll include with this film. But it's a completely different beast altogether. Uh, and it's supposed to be related to auriculatum, but it's quite different. Unfortunately, we haven't been able to get seed of that one. Polytrichum, which I will again show a still photo of that in bloom. It bloomed this year for us for the first time. It's supposed to be in subsection Maculifera, which is Strigillosum, Opraceum, Maculiferum, etc. cetera. Uh, but this is obviously Fortunia. So this was a shock this spring. It looks kind of like this, and I have a photo of that, which we'll include, but it's a big white fragrant ball of flowers in April. Very strange. Jens Nielsen now thinks that that collection of polytrichum is actually Chisinianum, which is in subsection auriculata. It's all very confused. We're still working on all this. Keep an eye on the newsletter, the website, the yearbook, and I try to keep that stuff updated. Um, but yeah. We'll, we'll attach the images that I have going as well. And now we'll go look at the foliage of polytrichum. Thank you. This is the last species in the glandulifrum auriculatum complex that we'll be dis discussing today. This is a species called 
polytrichum, uh, or currently called polytrichum. There's some confusion about that. But this was a Jens Nielsen collection, um, and this is supposed to be in subsection Maculifera, which includes, you know, Ocrasium and Strigillosum and Pachytrichum, familiar early spring blooming spe species. Uh, but this one actually is quite different in appearance, as you can see with these huge, beautiful, glossy leaves covered with long, stiff, bristly hairs. Really stunning foliage plant, super grower. We were assuming this would bloom in late summer, early fall, like the other species in the glandulifrum complex, uh, but we did bloom one this year at the garden, and it uh, had nothing to do with subsection maculifera. It's obviously a fortunia, I do have a photo that we'll be including with this video, uh, but it's a big ball of big open white flowers that are lightly fragrant in April. So it doesn't really match with the rest of the complex either in that it doesn't bloom in late summer, early fall like most of the others. But I still think it's in the same complex uh, with uh, glandulifrum and magnaflorum and serotinum and all these other species with the big leaves and the big giant white flowers. A stunning thing, you'll, you'll see the beautiful photo, but I like the species just for the foliage, which is really outstanding. Uh, these are probably about 10 years old now. And uh, again, it, it bloomed white, which was not unexpected. What was strange is that a couple of years ago, uh, we were on a mountain in Northern Guangxi and found this species again on a different mountain from where Jens found it. But according to the photo books for the national, for the park we were in, uh, they were deep pink. So that's very exciting. So we have the white form and now the pink form as well. Those are still quite young. Uh, there's now um, some confusion over the naming of this. And uh, Jens Nielsen strongly feels that this is actually the species Chisinianum, which is considered to be a relative of Auriculatum but it obviously shouldn't really be with auriculated. So I'm not sure how this fits into the whole complex, but it is another large-leaved, uh, giant white-flowered Fortunia from southern China, and we're still trying to sort that whole conundrum out. But anyway, what we're calling right now Polytrichum, stunning species just for foliage. I'm assuming it will have quite a bit of hardiness. And again, beautiful, beautiful flowers in April. Thank you. Now we'll look at a few pictures of uh, some of the species we've discussed in the glandulifrum auriculatum complex that we weren't able to see in bloom out in the garden. This is rhododendron faithii that we were talking about with the big beautiful shiny leaves that blooms in late September, early October. You can see my arm here, the size of those flowers. Uh, beautiful thing. So that's uh, mid-fall, fragrant white-flowered faithii. And here's another species we weren't able to observe in the garden. This is the one I was discussing that we found in Guangxi uh, that at first we thought was Chisinianum. It's obviously quite different from Auriculatum or any of the other species. You see the oblong, um, ob lanceolate leaves, very large leaves, very fuzzy with the tailed bud. Very hairy plant. No idea what that is. I think it's got to be probably a new species. But again, I think it's in that same complex with Serotinum, Magnaflorum, Glandulifrum. Uh, but we won't know for quite a while probably until that blooms. And we'll look at one more after this. Okay, and to wrap it up, I have a photo here of Polytrichum slash Chisinianum blooming. Uh, and again, this is obviously Fortunia. And this blooms in April though, which is interesting. It doesn't bloom in late summer, early fall like the other species in this complex and perhaps doesn't deserve to be in the complex, but I, I have a feeling it is related with the big, large, glossy leaves and coming from the same part of China. But that's the first blooming of polytrichum in cultivation. Uh, and again, we were quite surprised because we were expecting something that looked more like strigillosum. So very exciting, beautiful flowers, a good one to keep an eye out for in the catalog in a couple of years. Thank you.